This has to be the most personal conversation we've ever had. Then it's long overdue. But we don't get that much time to talk. You arrive and I go to work. Or I come home and you leave. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Sean held back a smile. Something else we need to discuss? This seems to be the night for it. Nathan wrapped his hands around his cup. Okay, this is how I see it. You come home, I leave, and suddenly you swapped one job for another. Now, I know you don't see your dad like that, but I'm right, aren't I? You walk through that front door and switch from Sean Clark server to Sean Clark caregiver. So, well, what I'm suggesting is a, a buffer zone. Sean frowned. Huh? Look, the healthcare company pays my salary, right? You agree on how many hours I work, so what if two days a week when you come home, I don't leave right away? What if I work an extra couple of hours? That way you get a little downtime. You can do your laundry, you wash the dishes, shop for groceries, whatever. And the reason I'm saying this, his expression grew grave. I know you only work 30 hours, but for the rest of the time, you're looking after Peter. And it's taken its toll. Now there's no one else around here to look out for you. Except me. Those warm brown eyes locked on his. You can't keep this up, Sean. Something's gonna give. And I don't want it to be your health, mental or otherwise. He held up his hands. I'm sorry if you feel I'm being too personal or taking liberties. But I had to say something. It's okay, Sean said quickly. And... I like your suggestion. Nathan sagged. Thank you. I was afraid you'd see it as intruding. No, you're, you're very kind. I do think it's imposing on you, however. You'd be losing time. Nathan laughed. Trust me, I don't have a lot to occupy my time. There's just me and my cat. Sean smiled. You have a cat? He grinned. No, I think he has me. I'm pretty sure Cat thinks he's in charge. Sean blinked. Cat? How original. When I got him from the Animal Refuge League in Westbrook, they told me Cat was a girl. But when I took her to the vet to get her shots, they asked if I wanted her neutered. I said, don't you mean spayed? And they said, no, neutered. Your cat is a boy. Well, wasn't it obvious? Nathan chuckled. He was a super hairy, tiny kitten. Maybe it's difficult to tell. He glanced at the wall clock. And speaking of cat, it's time I went home. He met Sean's gaze. You finish work at five tomorrow, don't you? Sean nodded. Well, don't hurry home. Take your time. Go sit on the eastern prom and gaze at the ocean. I can highly recommend it. Does wonders for the spirit. I may just do that. He let out a sigh. You're right. I'll talk to the company about changing your hours. Nathan stood. Thanks for the tea. I need to put that on my grocery list. I'll see you in the morning. Sleep well. Sean stood too. Thank you. For listening and for thinking of me, or all of it. You're welcome. Nathan flashed him a familiar smile. Sean walked him to the front door and waved as Nathan drove his car away from the curb. He closed it and locked up. He'd known the moment he'd met Nathan that he was one of the good guys, and their conversation only served to confirm his assessment. A very attractive good guy. <laughs>